Today we've come back down to the Blast Furnish 5 life extension project. In the last few days there's been some significant activity down here, not least as you can see behind me the removal of the downcomer. Uh, in the next few days the new downcomer is also going to be put in place and lifted uh, as another significant and visible step in a project. I'm joined today by Richard Chapman, Richard's uh, project engineer and responsible for some of these major movements. So Richard, uh, thanks for welcoming us to the project today. Tell us a bit about what's involved in uh, taking a 100 plus tonne downcomer off a blast furnace. Um, so we've brought in a special crawler crane um, to, to, to take the load, to get the reach, to get the downcomer section down. So the crane we've got has got a 120 metre uh, boom. So uh, we've had a 500 tonne crane assembling the sections of the boom over in the assembly area. And then we've done a lot of work in advance then to prepare the assembly area, stone up the iron road so we've got a safe route through uh, to site the crane. The next uh, big movement that we're about to witness is the, is the movement of the new downcomer across to the iron road here before it gets lifted in the air. Now, this isn't going to be done with a crane. It looks like some sort of mobile unit. Talk us through what's happening over there. So all the movements are being done with uh, SPMTs, so they're uh, self-propelled mobile transport units. They link together. So we've got four uh, units linked together supporting the trestle arrangement. Um, so the whole downcomer and the trestle arrangement with the shipping containers, it's all going to be transported together. And I guess with all this sort of activity, safety is absolutely paramount. What sort of uh, precautions do you put in place around the, the people in the process? Absolutely. So when we took down the main section of the downcomer, we had a full exclusion zone across the whole of the site. And then with the other segments that we took taken down, we've just managed those on an individual basis. So just having exclusion zones local to the lift. Um, it'll be the same for the new downcomer. What happens once it gets lifted up to the furnace? How do they, how do they fit it to the furnace? So they've got quarter flanges fixed to uh, both the old and the new sections. They get bolts, they'll get stud bars through those just to secure it initially. Uh, once they've got enough bolts in then they can release the load uh, and then they can weld it into position. So there we are, lots going on down the furnace, uh, still lots to happen. Uh, it's going to be visible from around the site and outside, um, a visible and significant progress and I think uh, everyone will be pleased to see the new downcomer in place. So, Richard, thanks very much for having Thank us. Thank you very much. So we've just witnessed the transportation over from the uh, CES curve down to the iron road in front of the furnace of the new downcomer and it was uh, transported on a on multi wheel platform, I can't describe it any better, but I've been joined now by Pete Hayes, he's from Mammut, he was the driver of that platform. Pete, what was it like? Yeah, it's exciting, you know, it's, it's big, bigger the better for me, but it's all uh, part of the job for me every day. And I guess you've had quite a lot of training and I guess you do bigger stuff than this, do you? Yeah, this in size isn't really that big at all, being honest. Normally oil rigs, your, your, your refinery modules, so a lot bigger. So this walk in the park, this one. And the pressure's on because everyone was looking at you. Uh, what does that feel like? I'm used to that now. I'm used to it. There's always people watching. To other people, it's amazing, you know, but like I said, it's my daily job. I do it every day, so that's it, yeah. And there was a lot of wheels pointing in a lot of different directions. It looked like you were sort of manoeuvring it inch by inch. It was really, really precise. So is, that, uh, is that how it goes, is it? Yeah, that, well, it, we work in millimetres, you know. It's, it's, never, it's never easy. It's always tight, but that's what we like, you know. It makes it exciting. Well, it makes it more exciting for me, so... <laughs> But I guess you don't want exciting, you want slow, steady and safe. Uh, uh, there must be a lot of safety procedures in place uh, around this sort of stuff. Yeah, exactly. When, you know, we come to move this, it's been pre-planned, you know, we've, we've walked the route. We know, we know if it's safe, you know, everything's been pre-thought of and that's how it ends up here safely. Yeah. Well, it's very impressive. Pete, congratulations. Thanks Thank very you. much for your time. Thank Cheers. You. Cheers. Awesome. <laughs> so behind us, you can see the uh, down camera has now been moved into place. I'm joined now by Richard Passmore. Richard is the engineering installation manager for MII, major contractor on site. Now, Richard, uh, your company's been responsible for the manufacture and, and installation of the downcomer. Uh, tell us a bit about it. Well, we manufactured the downcomer in our engineering workshops in Bedros in Caffili. Uh, it was manufactured uh, in two separate sections that we then delivered to site and then installed in the laydown area that you go over here. And then in conjunction with Mammut, then it was just being transported over there, ready for installation onto your furnace. So you've got quite a job in terms of getting it from Bedros to site, from site, and I think there's been a bit more work on it while it's been uh, on the CES curve, and then overseeing uh, this piece of work. How many people have you got kind of working on that? 
Uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, we've got about 20 guys in our teams working on the top, bottom for the furnace and also in the lay-down area. Uh, logistically, it was a bit of a challenge getting it here. The job is uh, not, not over yet by some long shot because uh, you've got to get it up into place. What's the challenges there? Well, we've had, a, we've had quite a successful demolition so far. Uh, the final piece came down uh, earlier today. Uh, in terms of installing it now, it's the challenge is surveying it and making sure that we are millimetre perfect so that when we install it, uh, we can position it into place, ready for it to be welded secure. And I guess the weather will play some part in that and uh, no risks to be taken with the weather and it'll have to wait until, until the place is calm, I guess. Yeah, uh, it, the weather forecast looks good over the next couple of days. Our plan is to lift this up in two days' time. Uh, weather forecast looks good, so we'll be looking for an early start to get it up in position. Well, good luck with that, Richard. Thanks very much for joining us. So we've just seen the major lift of the Blast 25 life extension project, which is the downcomer being lifted into place uh, on the furnace. An amazing experience to see it and uh, you know, the number of cranes that were involved and the inch by inch precision of that lift was uh, really something to behold. I'm joined now by Marcus Purchase. Marcus is in charge of the uh, rigging and heavy lifting across the site and has been really the man who's been looking at uh, managing the lift uh, and the cranes around the operation. Marcus, that was a tremendous sight to see. Uh, a lot of cranes working in conjunction there. Tell me how all that's managed. Basically, Tim, it's all down to the planning and supervision. Um, the lift plan was put in place. As you can see, as soon as you put two cranes on a job, it then becomes a complex lift. So. It, it's just a case of controlling it throughout and it went as smooth as we could have asked. And this beast behind us, I mean this is like a thousand tonnes in weight plus, it's got a boom, I think you said it would extend to 170 metres. You know, how, how, does a, how does a beast that big control something to within millimetres when it's lifting? Just the precision and its control really, Tim, it's down to its gearing and systems. Um, it's obviously, it can hoist and lower quickly or it can hoist and, and, and lower as slow as you want it to. And as you witnessed earlier, it, it took it into to the exact precision. And obviously due down to taglines also. I'm a moot working well with it and all in the planning. Yeah, so we saw some guys on the ground with those taglines. Uh, you know, you'd think they wouldn't be able to make much of a difference to, a, to something that weighs over 100 tonnes, but they're, they're quite important in that process. You'd be surprised, Tim. And it's all down to our wind speeds as well. So this time of year, we can have horrendous weather, but I don't think we realise how lucky we've been this year. We've had excellent weather for September going into October, so that made it quite, I won't use the word easy, but easy to control. We saw the Mammut team around uh, the lift today, and there's some MII guys, there's lots of Tata guys. I mean, this looks like a real example of proper teamwork. There must have been a lot of people involved. Exactly that, Tim. I think the planning has, has, uh, has taken months in advance to, to achieve this. But I really believe it's down to our Tata project team, to the Mammut team just working together in harmony. And as you can see, that's the result. So it's amazing being up close and personal to these uh, enormous machines, but uh, maybe no one thinks about how you get these things onto site and off again, because they don't just drive in and out, do they? No, great difficulty. Um, it's all about the rigging of them. And as you can see, when you look at it, it all comes apart in bits as if it was a an airfix model as such, but that's basically what it is, you know. It's a very, very impressive operation, Marcus, and thanks for uh, getting us up close to it. The down camera has gone up, uh, it's in place, the uh, the tolerance at the, where it's joined onto the furnace is, is literally millimetres, uh, and until you come and see it yourself, it's very difficult to appreciate the precision of such enormous machines. Uh, it's been a fantastic experience, Marcus, thanks very much for your insights. Thank you, Tim.